Good morning, good morning, good morning. For those out in the lobby and waiting area, come on in. Good morning. I'll say it again. Good morning. This side, good morning. Come on, give it to me like you mean it. Good morning. Amen. This is the day that the Most High, the Lord, 
the gracious God has made. What should we do about that day? We should rejoice and be? Amen. Amen. It's a blessing, right? Because there's some people who, who are not afforded the opportunity in God's sovereignty to see this day. But we are here. And that alone, regardless of whether you come in in struggle on a mountaintop or in a valley, um, God is good. And that's to be acknowledged because you're here right now. That in itself is a blessing. Listen, welcome to, what's up, Eric? I see you. What's up? Um, uh, uh, welcome to Epiphany Fellowship, 1130 a.m., our second gathering. Amen? All right. Um, uh, thank you for worshiping with us today. For anybody online, uh, thank you for worshiping um, with us virtually. Do something in the chat. Put some praise hands, a clap, a muscle. Do something. Let us know you're there. Um, we are thankful that God allowed us to be here today. We're going to get going with our worship service. I'm going to pray, and we're going to get it going. Most high and gracious God, um, we acknowledge you um, as what you are, the most high Elohim, the highest of all beings. There's none like you. We acknowledge that. Be with us today in our worship gathering, not merely for our benefit, but for your glory. For you, for, for, for all the cosmos, especially people in this room, your creation here, to recognize you as you are, high and lifted up. But then also, we know that you care about your people too, God. So for all of those who come here on, on high mountaintops and, and, and with heavy burdens and, and weighed down, God, would you meet us all where we are? Um, for your namesake, for your glory, and for our benefit, the benefit of your children. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It's good to be in the house of the Lord, is it not? Let's stand on our feet and worship the Lord. Psalms 117 says, Praise ye the Lord, all ye nations, praise him, all ye people, for his merciful kindness has been great to, towards us. And the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Has God been faithful to you? Has he been good to you? We're here to tell God about himself today. God, we thank you. God, we thank you for your kindness. You're an awesome God. You're an awesome God. So we're just going to sing this song. If it wasn't for your love, if it wasn't for your grace, we don't know where we would be. Everybody clap your hands like this. If you believe that God is awesome. Oh, 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 oh. Song goes like this. Lord, you are awesome. Yeah. Lord, you are awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lord, you are awesome. Yes, he is. Yeah. Lord, you are awesome. Everybody say, Lord, you're awesome. You are awesome. Yeah. Oh, Lord, you're awesome, God. Yeah. What a mighty God we serve. Yeah. Yeah. Lord, you're awesome. And if it wasn't for your love, for your love, it wasn't for your love. I don't know, I don't know where I'd be without you. If it wasn't for your love, wasn't for your grace, I don't know where I'd be without you. Yeah, everybody clap, say, Lord. Yeah, God, you're the mighty God. God, we serve, yeah. Lord, you are awesome. God, you keep on making a way for me. Lord, you yeah. Awesome. And if it wasn't for your love, it wasn't, for your, wasn't love. for your grace and mercy, grace, I don't know. I yeah. If it wasn't for your amazing love, for your love wasn't for your grace, for your yeah. Grace, I don't 
don't know. It wasn't for your love, it wasn't for your, love. Wasn't for your grace, it wasn't for your grace. I don't know where I, I would be. I'd yeah, be I would be sinking deep in sin if it wasn't. It wasn't for your grace. It wasn't for your grace. I don't know where I'd be. Listen, I searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low. Still couldn't find nobody, yeah, nobody greater, yeah, nobody greater, nobody greater than you, yeah, 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 everybody say search all over, couldn't find, I look high and low, still couldn't find nobody, nobody greater, nobody greater, nobody I searched all over, said, searched all over, couldn't find, I looked everywhere, still couldn't find, nobody greater, nobody greater than Jesus, nobody greater than you, yeah, come on, sing with it, say, I searched all over, couldn't find, I looked hard in love, yeah, still couldn't find no, nobody greater, nobody greater, nobody greater than her, nobody greater than Jesus, yeah, say I searched all over, couldn't find nobody, I looked hard in love, still couldn't find no, yeah, nobody greater, Nobody greater, nobody greater than Jesus. Oh, I searched all over, couldn't find no time. Still couldn't find nobody greater. I tried so many things and couldn't find none of none of none. Say nobody greater, nobody greater.
Nobody like Jesus. He's my very best friend. He's the bridge over troubled water. He's the wind in the middle of it. Searched all on, but it hung no on. Still, nobody greater. Yeah, nobody greater than I. Yeah, sing that again with a. So searched all over, couldn't find. I'm trying so many things, still couldn't find. Who can fill the void that I need? Nobody great. Nobody greater. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Oh, yeah. Nobody greater. Ooh, nobody greater. Oh, nobody greater than. And you're going to be searching for a long time, right? If you're going to have to find somebody greater than the Lord God Almighty, you're going to, be, you're going to have an, any, a, a job that's going to take forever, for eternity, because you ain't going to find nobody. Amen? Amen. Look, uh, as we do uh, every service on every Sunday, we're going to state the Apostles' Creed, right? So they're going to inform our minds of who it is that we're worshiping. And we're going to make a verbal proclamation. Amen? So let's read on the account of three. One, two, three, read. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. We serve a mighty God and he's a mighty God that understands us. Um, this song says, mighty one, mighty one, we worship you. For I've tasted and seen your goodness and I've stood in the power of your presence. And I felt the depths of your mercy and oh, how your love, it always surrounds me. Have you felt God's goodness? Have you felt the depths of his mercy? I don't know about y'all, but I, I've needed some depths of mercy in my life. I felt the depths of his mercy. So we praise you, mighty one. We worship you, mighty one. Mighty one, we worship you. Mighty one, mighty one, we worship you. Everybody say, Mighty one, mighty one, mighty one. We worship you, strong and mighty one, mighty one, mighty one, yes. We worship you, for I've tasted and seen your goodness, and I have stood in the power of your presence. For I have felt the depths of your mercy, and oh, how your love, it always surrounds me. For I have tasted and seen your goodness, and I have stood in the power of your presence, for I have felt the depths
depths of your mercy and know how you love it always surrounds me. Say, for, for I have tasted your goodness, your goodness and I have stood in the power of your presence for I have felt the depths and know how your love it always for I have tasted taste and seen your goodness and I have stood in the power of your prayer. And I felt the depths of your mercy, oh God. The of your mercy. And know oh how your love, oh how your love it always surrounds me. For I have tasted taste and seen. And seen yeah. In the land of the living, I have. I've tasted and seen your goodness and mercy follows me all of my days, yes. Yeah. And I felt the very depths of your mercy. And he demonstrated his love. was my cross you bore so I could live in the freedom you died for and now my life is yours and I will sing of your goodness forevermore worthy is your name Jesus, you deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name. Oh, oh, oh. you deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Say, worthy is your name. Worthy is your name. Jesus. You deserve all the praise. Worthy is your name, Father. Worthy is your name, Jesus. Yeah. You deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Say, worthy is your name. Jesus. You deserve all the praise. your name and only your name is worthy only your name is worthy worthy is your name worthy is your name Jesus the only true and living God you deserve all the praise and you're worthy of it all worthy together and now and now my shame is gone Woo. I stand amazed in your love undeniable your grace goes on your grace goes on and on and I will sing of your goodness say worthy is your worthy is your Jesus
Jesus, you deserve. Lift up the name of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. There's healing in the name of Jesus. Deliverance in the name of Jesus. Holy is the name of Jesus. Jesus, 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 we worship. We love you, we love you, and we love you. We worship you, we worship you, yeah. You're the only living God. You're the only true and living God. Jesus, at the mention of your name, every knee will bow and tongue proclaim, Jesus, Jesus, you are Savior, you You are. You're the only living God. Jesus the Christ, you are the only living God. Yes, you are.
worship. but you never can be replicated. You are the Savior and the Lord. Thank you for this time we have to worship you, be with us, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen, amen. You can be seated. Savior, Lord, and God. Mm, that's so good. That's my heart well. Quick, uh, passage of scripture, Psalm 22, verses 1 uh, through 3. Uh, David writes this. He says, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Why are you so far from my deliverance and from my words of groaning? 
My God, I cry by day, but you do not answer. By night, yet I have no rest. But you are holy and throned on the praises of Israel. I, I read that passage um, as I want to share with you another lesson for those who may be new. About six weeks ago or so, um, my family, our house caught fire. And uh, we were all safe, but a lot of our stuff got destroyed, and we had to live in a hotel for a month. And it was hard. Uh, and so I've been sharing lessons uh, that Christ has been teaching us with uh, the family. And so um, lesson one, if you remember, was Jesus is worthy of worship anyway. Um, lesson two was always choose faithfulness over comfort. Uh, lesson three that the Lord has taught us um, was God is a safe place for your pain. Uh, in this verse, um, it's an amazing verse because God inspires David to write, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? He says to him, I cry by day, but you don't answer. Can you imagine saying that to God? You're not answering my prayers. You're not hearing me. I feel abandoned. Um, and this verse resonates, and it continues to resonate, because at times we felt abandoned. We're like, Lord, our house is gone. My kids are scared of dying. They hear a fire truck, and they're shaking. And so I felt abandoned, but... One of the things the Lord has taught us is that he's a safe place. That we can be honest about the fact that we feel abandoned. He's taught us that our pain should drive us to him, not cause us to turn against him. And he's also taught us that Jesus is the model of how to do that. Because the scripture says that Jesus was acquainted with sorrows. He was a man of grief. And he brought that pain. Even on the cross, he quotes this verse. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So he's the example of what it looks like to, to know that God is a safe place for your pain, but he's also the reason why I can go to God. That if he hadn't been on that cross, God wouldn't have to hear me. I deserve to be abandoned. He was abandoned on my behalf. So now I have this great privilege. I can bring anything to God, any pain, any sorrow, any grief. I can bring it to him, and he's there for me. So never, never forget, no matter what you go through, because life is hard, God is a safe place for your pain. Amen? Amen. 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 If you are a first-time visitor and you've never been here before, welcome, welcome, welcome. And so that we can say hello to you and greet you and stay in touch, hopefully, we would ask you to stand up so we can know who you are. Anybody here is a first-time visitor, just stand up, stand up real quick. Welcome, welcome. I saw you pop up. Thank you. Somebody else, anybody else, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Anybody else, just these two? All right, great, thank you. Oh, you're new, welcome, welcome, welcome. Don't wake up the baby. All right, welcome. Uh, we're delighted that you are here. I say it a lot, you could be anywhere. You have freedom to go anywhere, do anything. You could be chill on the couch, but you're here with us. And that is an honor that you've chosen to spend some time with us. And so we wanna stay in touch with you. If you could grab your phone real quick and scan that QR code. What that, what's on there is a little form and it's just a way for us to stay in touch. We love seeing you here in the gathering, but we want to actually get to know you, find out your name, how we can pray for you, how we can serve you. And so please uh, scan that. Stand up again so we can see who you are. So you went over there, right? Okay, all right. All right, you see these people, Epiphany? Let's greet our first time visitors with the love of Christ.
us continue to worship God through our giving. For those who may be new, um, one of the things people have told me is that the way that we do giving is, is unique. And so I'd like to explain it a little bit for those who might be new, particularly our first time visitors. We uh, remind ourselves week in and week out of what God thinks about money. We have a lot of misconceptions uh, in the church and the culture, and so we want to remind, constantly remind ourselves. So I'm going to read some questions, and then you'll see the answers up from the screen. And for those who have been here a while, we do this every week, so sometimes y'all get a little, uh, I don't know, it's like very rote to you. So let's read it like we mean it, right? Like it's the first time you ever heard this truth, right? All right, first question. Who is the owner of all things? Amen. He the boss. And who provides for us? Amen. God actually values us. And how are we to respond? very appropriate response. And how are we to give? Amen, amen. And God himself is a cheerful giver. One of my favorite verses, it says, God it was, God was pleased to crush Christ. He delighted in purchasing us through his son, right? He's the ultimate cheerful giver. So let's give in light of who he is and as he get, has given to us. A couple, um, couple ways to give. Uh, my favorite way is the Church Center app. If you don't have the Church Center app, go into your app store, whether it's Google or Apple, download that, pick Epiphany Fellowship, and then you can give through there. Announcements are there. All kinds of things are there. You'll see me talk about the Church Center app all through the announcements. So please uh, do that. Uh, other options, baskets have went around, or you can always go to the website, epiphanyfellowship.org forward slash give. But whatever your means, give cheerfully as unto the Lord. A couple announcements. Uh, membership is starting up, Covenant Community class. I used to say classes, but it's just one long, uh, well, not that long. It's like half the morning, I think, uh, class coming up on March 23rd. So this month, I can't believe it's already March but this month, sign up for Covenant Community class. It's gonna be on Saturday, March 23rd, and you can do that in the Church Center app um, as well. Uh, ladies, the sisters have, amen, amen. The women of God are continuing in the Salt Women's Bible Study, uh, the story that shapes us on Thursday, March 7th. So that's this coming uh, Thursday. Of course, you know where to find out about it. And to sign up, it's in the Church Center app. So please, if you're a sister and you want to join the ladies, sign up for that. Uh, the couples, married couples. We got something for everybody today. The married couples on Friday, amen, those who have been united in marriage. Friday, March 8th, is we're having marriage night. Uh, again, Church Center app, sign up for that and get uh, some good truth to strengthen your, your, your oneness in the Lord. The young people got something for you, too. Uh, also, Friday, March 8th at 7 o'clock, Epiphany Youth Bible Study is coming up. And also for you, the youth retreat is coming up April 26th to 28th. All right, so we got the Bible study and the retreat. You can sign up for both things in the Church Center app. And this one, the final one, is for the whole family. It's being sponsored by Humanity, but everybody's welcome. March 18th, Humanity's having a, hosting a basketball game at the Wells Fargo Center. So if you got hoop dreams, you can, you can sign up and play. Men and women can play um, on the Sixers court, all right? Uh, March 18th, so sign up for that and come cheer your family on. If you're not a hooper, I'm not a hooper. I'm Jamaican, so and I get down with some real football, right? You know, but just saying, just saying, just saying, I'm not, not a hooper, but you can come cheer on the hoopers, right? March 18th, Humanity, Sixers versus Heat for that. Sign up for that in the Church Center app, all right? So let's continue to worship our God, our good and great God. Let's pray. Father, I love you. I love your church. I just love being here among your people. I love hearing songs lifted to your name. Love just, just everything about being part of your family, Lord. It's just such a delight. So thank you for Christ. He's the one who makes all of this possible. 
and he's the reason why we're here. So I pray for the rest of the gathering that many souls would be touched, that somebody would get saved, that those who know you would love you more and show the love of Christ in every single area of their life. Thank you for all you mean to us. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's stand as we worship. Desperate for you. Are you desperate for the Lord? Oh, and I, I, I I'm lost without you. Yes, yes, yes. Everybody sing. This is the
without your direction. So we're going to sing this. Yes, you are God, and you're all I ever needed. You're all my one. Help me know you are near. Everybody say, say, oh. this sense and my wife does too she spoke to me I got a sense that there's, there's a lot of healing that needs to be in this room um, I'm thinking about Donna I'm thinking about Sister Cynthia um, Jamise the Lord put us on your um, your heart if you're dealing with any type of need for healing if you need healing somebody bring the little table up for me um, Jay I want you to come forward whatever type of healing emotional healing physical healing I want to pray for you today. I just got this sense that there are a lot of wounds in the room physically and emotionally. I want to be able to touch everybody. So if you can, I'm going to put my hands on every single person in here. And I want everybody to be in the best line possible. The best line possible. The best line possible. So as you get, there's so many of y'all, as you get prayed for, I want you to, um, want you to go to your seat. Um, Lord, there's healing in the room. God, in the name of Jesus, I pray for Christine. I pray for her where she is, Lord God. I pray that you would give her healing. Juju, you heal her, Lord God, whatever she's dealing with, physically, emotionally. Satan, you can't have her. You can't have her. You can't have her. You let go in Jesus' name. God, I pray for healing in every sector of her life, every sector of their lives, Lord God, every sector of their lives, Lord God. Whatever's unresolved, whatever's unresolved, God said it's going to be taken care of. Heal every heart. Heal this regret in the name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus, bring shalom. Bring shalom, Lord God. Bring shalom. Bring shalom. Bring shalom. She's been dealing with stuff for a minute, Lord God. And I'm just asking for release. Because we know. Our healing scripture is, surely you bore our griefs and our infirmities and carried away, carried away, carried away their diseases. Carried away. Carried away. Thank you for the moves that she's made. Help her to continue to make those right moves, Lord God. Touch her from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. Every good decision God's going to bless. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. The Lord just says, just walk uprightly. Just walk uprightly. Just walk uprightly in Jesus' mighty name. 
Touch her, God. Touch her, God. She needs a kidney uh, transplant. Lord God, we're just praying for healing uh, for her life. From the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. Bring shalom and healing to her life. Every battle she's dealt with, Lord God, I pray that you would help her to sense and know that there's victory in you. In Jesus' mighty name. Um, she's dealt with constant illnesses and disappointments. God, touch her right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And she's been bedridden. Lord, I just pray that you would heal her. All that she's went through, even that tragedy, we know she knows what I'm talking about. Lord God, the emotional scars are still there. And I pray that you would bring healing to every fracture in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Touch this family. Touch this family. Touch its fractures. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Once you get prayed for, if you could go to your seat, I want to make sure I get to everybody. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for healing, for shalom. You bore the griefs. You bore the infirmities. You carried away the diseases. Bring healing in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus. Dr. Sarita, Pastor Mark, I'm going to need y'all to turn right here and I need y'all to start praying for people the oils right here Lord touch her where it hurts touch her where it hurts let it out it's okay let it out let it out it's okay let it out let it out touch her where it hurts touch her in her greatest place of pain Lord God help her to know you're near help her to know you're near God help her to know that you're near God help her to know that you're near God he is near to the brokenhearted, and he saves those who are crushed in spirit. Help her to know that, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. You can stay here. You can, you can get on your knees if you want to. Yes. She want me. Yeah, Lord, I just pray for Donna. She's been through a lot of health challenges. And this latest one is no different. And so, Lord God, this is a this is a massive undertaking. A kidney transplant. Lord God, I'm praying that you would touch her from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. I hear her saying, how much more, God? How much more, God? God, I pray that most of all, that her heart would not lose. She would not get faint with all the health challenges she's got. Help her not to get faint. I come against the stupid things the enemy would say to her in her mind. I pray against everything that he would say. I pray against every demonic force, everything that he would put in your mind to make you think something ignorant. God, I come against anything that would make her feel worthless. Help her to know that she's new in Christ. Help her to know that she is the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet, Lord God. Amen, amen, amen. If y'all just let me get this time to pray, I just feel, feel led to do this. I know we'll be here for a while. I pray for Shalom over this one. I've seen her at the altar many a times. And Lord God, I just pray for healing from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet, where she's believing you, where she's asking you, where she's believing you, where she's asking you, where she's believing you, asking you. And I pray that you would touch her in every area of her life. Um, one of the things that I, I pray that you would help her to know is when you're already working on her. Help her to be encouraged and know that it's already happening, Lord God. And she doesn't need to come up. Help her to know that you're already with her. Break every chain in her life in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I'm going to come back up here. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus for healing, breakthrough, healing and breakthrough. <laughs> That's what you're saying, healing and breakthrough, 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 every area of his life, every area of his life. Helping to know you're near, but Lord, I pray that you would touch him from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. In every area that's healing is needed. The things that are seen and the things that are unseen. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus. 
Yes, Lord, I pray for him, Lord God, for shalom and healing. Healing and breakthrough. Healing and breakthrough. <laughs> healing and breakthrough from the crown of his head to the soles of his cheeks. Touch him, Lord God. Touch him in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Touch her, Lord God. Healing and breakthrough from the crown of her head. God is saying that's going that's enough. That's going to be the enough of the prayer. Healing and breakthrough from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. Keep her steady in this season. Keep her steady in this season. Keep her steady in this season. Oh, I see you. Oh, God says, let it out. Let it out. Let it out. Let it out. Both of y'all. Let it out. Let it out. It's been a long haul, hasn't it? It's been a long haul, hasn't it? Lord God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will bring shalom and healing. Let it out. He says, let it out. He says, let it out. Yes, he did. Let it out. He says, his shoulder is there in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Shalom and healing. Shalom and healing. Who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Can I lift this a little bit? Just a little bit. You don't have to take it off. Touch her. Healing and breakthrough from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. It is enough. Lord God, help her to know that you're enough. Help her to know that you're enough. Help her to know that you're enough. And I'm also praying for a massive amount of healing and shalom on her life from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. Will you touch her? Her coming and going. Touch her coming and going. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, touch him. Heal and set free and deliver. Heal and set free and deliver from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. Deliverance in his name. Help him to know that you are enough. Touch him, Lord God. Touch him, Lord God, where he is. Lord God, he comes every week and he pays great attention. Lord God, will you visit this household? Will you visit the caregiver? Will you visit th this caregiver right here? She's a caregiver. Being a caregiver is a heavy load. Being a caregiver is a heavy load. Touch her, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the ways that she doesn't see, and help her to know that you're going to hold her arms up like Moses' arms were held up in the wilderness. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, no guilt and no shame. No guilt and no shame. In the mighty name of Jesus, you are great in God's eyes. In the mighty name of Jesus, touch and heal, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Touch her from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. Bring absolute shalom and peace and healing and strength and truth and life and love. And help her to know that you're enough. Oh, help her to know. Lift your hands. You need to know that he's enough. His grace is sufficient for you. His grace is sufficient for you. And God, where she's looking for healing and release, do it in the name of Jesus, God. In the name of Jesus. I sense a lot of emotional pain in this room. God, in the name of Jesus. Um, I see a lot of cracks in your life. There's a lot of cracks. And God, I'm praying that you would pour what's needed in those cracks, Lord God, in order to bring this life back together. Go ahead and let it out. Go ahead and let it out. Let him speak to you. He's healing those cracks. Lift your hands. He's going to heal them cracks. I see cracks. Cement cracks just crumbles for some reason. And I see God pouring, pouring his grace into those cracks to reseal your life in those places where those cracks happen. Lord God, be with her in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I'm going to go this way. Lord God, I, I, I want to pray for these right in the front, Lord God, who are here for just an immense amount of emotional healing. Just an immense amount of emotional healing, God. Swing your hand across this front. Swing your hand across this front. Oh, y'all can let it out. Y'all can let it out. He's here. He's here. You don't, have to, you don't have to hold it in. God's got you. God's got you. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Oh, he's going to do it. Oh, he's going to do it. He's going to do that for you. He's going to set you free. Let it go. Let it go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's going to do it. Healing from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet, Lord God. In the mighty name of Yeshua. Touch, touch, touch where they're asking. Gone through a recent health crisis, Lord God. And I just pray for Sam that you would touch her. I see cracks here too, Sam. Oh, 
God wants to pour his healing into those cracks. He's going to pour his healing into those cracks. He's going to pour his healing into those cracks. Those places where you feel like there's just loose hinges, I'm praying that God would just restore and renew you in the quiet place of your soul, sis. Oh, let it go. Let it go. It's okay. Let it go. He, his shoulder is right there with you. His shoulder is right there with you in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. Touch all that she carries. Touch her to help her to know that you want to carry her. Lord God, to heal her from what happened recently. What happened recently. Lord, touch her in her disappointments, Lord. Touch her in her disappointment, Lord God, and resurrect hope in her like never before, God. Resurrect hope. life together. He knows he made some mistakes, Lord God. Um, you said you would restore to him the years that the locusts have eaten. Restore to him what he thinks he's failed in. God doesn't see you as a failure, Nate. You're more than a conqueror. You're more than a conqueror through him who loved you. You are not a failure. <laughs> Go ahead, let it out, brother. It's okay. It's okay. Let it out. Let it out. Let it out. Let it out. You don't have to earn anybody's love. You don't have to earn anybody's love. Let it out. Let it out. It's okay. It's okay. person that's afraid of coming up. Um, man, I just got this heavy sense that there's some, some heavy emotional cracks in people's lives in this room. And Lord, this sermon's going to help, but I want you to, I want you to know that God is just saying he's going to pour healing into those cracks to bring the pieces, to bring the pieces back together again. And so in a second, when they finish praying, he wants you to thank him in advance that it'll be done, that it'll be done. Oops, I'm sorry. Touch her. That reoccurring thing that she's been coming to you about. He says, let it out. Touch her, Lord. Touch her, Lord. Touch her, Lord. Oh, yeah, yeah. He loves you. And he's going to take care of you. He's not going to abandon you. He's not going to abandon you. Let it out. Fix my mic. No more. Thank you. Oh, God, let her let it out. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. 
You just cry out before the Lord. Cry out before the Lord. He's got you. He's got you. Cry out before the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Sing a little bit, come on. Yeah. Kristen, if you're watching, hold on. Kristen, if you're watching, um, God wants me to speak to you. If you're watching today, um, I'm praying for you right now. Oh, man that God would push you into the place that you've been avoiding. Text me if you're on now. Those of you who are watching, I'm praying for you that God would heal the crevices in your life. Some of you are at home because you're not healed. And I'm praying that God would heal your relationship with the church. I hear a heavy word, I hear a big word, abused. Lord God, anyone that's dealt with spiritual abuse, heal them. Ah. Anyone on those waves that are dealing with it, stretch your hand towards the screen. Those of you out there, Receive what God has. Lift your hands right there where God has you. God, bring peace to them. Another word I hear God saying is confidence. I want you to, um, God is, wants to restore your confidence in several things that's good for you. That's good for you. Has everybody been prayed for? Yeah. We have a few more. Yeah. Help me know you are near. Hallelujah. So, I want you right now, every last person, the Bible says, be anxious for nothing, but everything by prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving. Listen to me, I know that some of you all are going through a desperately hard time but I want you to do what Isaiah 61 says it says for the spirit of heaviness put on the garment of praise you don't wait till you receive the healing to give him the glory some of y'all gonna get it in a second you give him the glory as if it's all ready as if it's already yeah picture him doing it picture him setting you free picture him healing you picture him giving you a breakthrough pictures you seeing everything being all right pictures your celebration picture your celebration that it's already
yeah, 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 yeah. Some of y'all ain't got it yet. Some of y'all will understand. And listen, if you ain't going through something, you can pray for somebody else. You can praise God for somebody else. If somebody beside you was the one that went up, you ought to put your hand on their shoulder and shabak to God. Lift your voice for your friend. Lift your voice for your brother. Lift your voice for your sister. Lift your voice for your household. Lift your voice for whoever's not here that you believe in God for them. You ought to text somebody that ain't here and say, listen here, we praising God for what he's going to do. say daddy are we there yet daddy are we there no 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 just praise him like you already know that the good news he's bringing it to pass one day you're gonna look behind you and see I like this shh, shh, one thing one thing my 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 my, my. My, I have a mirror on my car. Hear me today. And it says to me, items may be closer than they seem, but the mirror makes it look like it's pretty far away. But you don't know that something's in your blind spot coming right up on you right now. All I want to let you know that even though your stuff seems like it's far, God, stop out of here to tell you this, that items may seem far away, but they're closer. Let's get our hearts and minds ready for the word. Amen. But God's going to do something powerful. Amen. Amen. Put your hands together for the Lord one last time. Amen. 
How many of you feel your help coming? Oh, yeah. You feel your help coming. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. Amen. Amen. Put your hands together for the Lord one last time. Amen. Um. All right. Well, we're still in our series um, going through um, culture shift. Open your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 16, verses 1 through 4 and verse 9, CSB version. One, two, three, read. I'd like to talk about today in this part of our culture shift series trained to make good decisions trained to make good decisions almighty one you are the beginning and the end you are the truth and you're the life you're also our clarity and God I pray today for a great sense of sovereign clarity on the lives of your people. Lord God, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that people would find their footing today in ways that they never have. Work on their hearts. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. trained to make good decisions. Um, when I first started walking with the Lord, um, when I first started walking with the Lord, I used to ask God about everything. I was, I was super legalistic, meaning I was judgy, you know, I was the Christian Christian. You know, that's back when we carried Bibles to church. We didn't have phones. And we had the, you can go to the Christian bookstore and get you you know, your little journal made and you put the zip around it and you got the little place. To, some of y'all don't do that no more. That's, that's when you was a real Christian. You came to church. It looked like a bag. Your Bible was so big, you know. And um, I asked God about everything. You know, what should I eat? And, you know, should I go over here? Should I go left or right, God? I, I just want to really be in your will. And I, I, I would overdo it. But then I started growing a bit and I started learning how to, how to ask God um, for key things in my life, you know. Like, who should I marry? Amen. <laughs> Where should I go to school? Uh, what should I do for the rest of my life? And, uh, and, 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 of course, some of the first things I talked about was out of a passion just to follow the Lord. But as you grow and as you develop as a believer, and as you'll see in this text, there's some things that you don't have to overpray about. There are things that you can just make a decision to do. But, but, but over the years, I, I have found that, th 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 and this is how, this is big. Um, I found that if you want to get to know a person quickly, listen, look at the decisions that they make. Y'all better hear me today. The reasoning behind their decision making, what is the fruit of their decision making, and the type of people they surround themselves with, and the type of decisions the people they're around with make and the results of those decisions. And so what's interesting about the book of Proverbs, it is, it is a book of really three people, three types of people, but really ultimately two. But I'll name the three, the naive, the wise, and the fool. Now, really, it's the wise and the fool. The naive is the person that does, hasn't fully grown in wisdom, but they can become a fool or they can become wise. Now, it's interesting there's one really main word for wise, maybe two, but really one main word, chokmah. Somebody say chokmah. Yeah, that's a Hebrew word that means skillfully live out what you know. 
That's what it means. Now, 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 the, now in Proverbs, there's, there's not just one type of fool. There's about two or three types of fools. It, 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 in other words, there's levels to foolery. Okay? So, 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 so the, the, the worst kind of fool that the Bible talks about is the Nabal. The Nabal, that means stupid fool. But you're not just a fool, you stupid, right? You know, that's the person you definitely don't want to be, uh, is, is the stupid fool. But one of the things that, that you'll find out through the book of Proverbs is it gives axioms that are a general principle but has exceptions to certain parts of it. And that's one of the things that you want to do. You want to be careful how you read Proverbs as a result race-based book. But one of the things that as, as in pastoring people and in, and, and, and in discipling people and walking with people and helping people is the biggest culture that needs to shift in the life of most Christians Young and old is making better and more mature decisions. I mean, in addition, many of you under the sound of my voice have to grow in a way that you need to mature to know what decisions you make are actually bad. You, you, got, you, got, you got to begin to know that, right? Right, 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 right. And, and, and so you, you, Proverbs is about a father and a mother training their children up in what it means to skillfully win at life. And, and that, that's, that's what the book is. It, 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 the parents want uh, them to, to, to skillfully win at life. It begins with a father and it ends with a mother. <clears throat> Interestingly enough, and so you, you want to be able to, as a believer, make, different, make, make great decisions in every sector of your life. You want to make good personal life decisions. A to the dog on man. You want to make good family decisions. You ought to lift your hands on that part. B business decisions. Not just boss moves, right? F good financial decisions. You should have spoken tongues on that part. No, don't do that. Uh, household direction. So, so, so uh, can, can I just, I, I want to stand in this introduction a little bit. Um, there are three wills of God, and then I give you the sub wills. Are y'all cool with that? Now, now, there's the sovereign will of God, there's the moral will, and then there's individual will. Those, those are the three wills of God, right? Now, when you look at the three wills of God, that, these, these what you call God's perfect will. Somebody say God's perfect will. Perfect will is the stuff that God's, that, that's what he, that's, that's, that's this is going to hit right here. Just like this. This is unstoppable stuff that God wants to happen that that nothing you do thwarts it, okay? Then there's what's called uh, uh, um, uh, 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 his permissive will. Now, all of God's permissive will, historically, we've thought of as bad. All of it isn't bad. So what God allows is his permissive will. So everything that he allows, right? Everything he allows in your life, none of that. We see it every day. Now, all permissive will is a sin, allowing people to choose or not to choose. We're going to come back to all of this. And what's best for them from God's perspective? What I like about this, though, is the reality of the permissive decisions and mistakes that either you committed or somebody did to you. This is the beauty of this. If God goes, if we go back to God's sovereign will, what, it doesn't stop God's sovereign will in your life. Yeah. Oh, y'all, y'all ain't getting it. So, so, so when Joseph went through all his brothers, put him through slavery, and they came to him, and, and, and they thought he was going to kill them to get retribution on him. They didn't know that he'd grown mature. And he said, this is when you know you've grown, when somebody did you super dirty. And you say, what you meant for evil, God meant for good. You, you know you mature when somebody did you stinky dirty. And you can see the divine work and hand of God in your life despite what they did. And what's crazy about the story of Joseph is Joseph not only forgave his brothers, he preserved them. You know you're a Christian. If you, if you got a chain, you can, take, you can cut all the legs out from under him. But you decide, I'm not going to be dirty to you like you were being dirty to me. And guess what? I'm going to heap coals like Romans chapter 12 says. 
on your head because God got so much purpose on my life, I can't get pleasure out of doing you dirty because God ain't take me through all of that to mature me through all of that, to give me a breakthrough through all of that, for me to make the same moves I did before I went through it. Because little did you know some of the stuff that happened to you was God allowing it for a reason, maybe unknown now, but one day he will show the things that he wanted to develop and mature you in. So when you, when you, when you look at this and when you, when you work through this idea of decision making, if we can get this right more often, we know we can get it wrong sometimes, but if we get decision making right more often, we'll have a beautiful life and we'll be able to help others Point one, point one, if you're going to make good decisions. Whatever you are serious about in life, you plan for. <laughs> Whatever you're serious about in life, you plan for. It's interesting. It says the reflections of the heart belong to mankind. This is dope. The word reflections in other translations can be translated plans, uh, but it also is an interesting word. Um, the, the word lexically means to set in order. It's a, it's a word used of worship. It's a term of worship. In other words, in other words so, so, so to plan is to worship. Okay? Let me explain something to you. God plans his sovereign will. He doesn't plan your individual will. Okay? In other words... There are things, God's not going to tell you how to buy a house. You got a plan for that. Okay, we, y'all going to see in a second. And so, so, so in, other, in other words, there are things in your life, everything in your life that means something to you must have a plan. Everything that means anything to you. So, so, so he, says, he says, the reflections of the heart belong to mankind. And so, 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 so keep the verse up there. The reflections of the heart. Heart in Hebrew means mind, emotions, will. Somebody say mind, mind. emotions, emotions, will. So we talk about mind, that means uh, uh, basically um, values and, and, and goals, right, um, that are God's, not yours, right? God's ultimate goals behind different things. And we'll talk about what you should be embedding in your goals and in your vision and in your planning. Are you tracking with me? But then uh, uh, emotions is your affections, that are attached to what you what, what wants to happen. So, 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 and we're going to talk about what God does with that, right? But then we'll executing the thing that you value and have a passion for. Okay, now, when we talk to this, it says it belongs to mankind. In other words, God puts in your hand to plan stuff. Now, this is very important. Hear me today. One of the last frontiers of my life to really take seriously was my finances. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, I grew up with a traumatic relationship with money. Because in my house, you know, I ain't going to tell too much, sis. You know, I know you're there. And, uh, you said it's all right? Okay, all right. Uh, <laughs> my sister, I'm like, I ain't going to tell everything. but um, Man, we grew up in a very traumatic household financially. My relationship with money was traumatic because we didn't know when the bills were going to get paid. My dad was a numbers runner. He kept a gun on him. Uh, and he was in the choir. <laughs> he was a Buffalo soldier in World War II and the Korean War, got two Purple Hearts, grew up in the Jim Crow South, and was a straight gangster and had hands and pointing the gun skills, all right? And we grew up where he was, he was an alcoholic, and so the, the gas would get turned off. My dad, was, my dad was a wild. He would go get a big wrench, go outside, and return the gas on after the gas people left. My, that was my dad. And so, and so, don't tell them I'm not here and tell them I'm in the hospital when the bail people call. That's when the bail people, they, didn't, they, they call. And, and, and my relationship with money. So when I grew up, I didn't realize it until I got married. When I got married, um, if we had to go see the accountant, I would get anxiety attacks. And I was like, what is wrong with me? And, I, and in other words, because when I finally got a little bit of teeny tiny money, I felt like money was therapy for me to ease what I was feeling about life in that. Y'all not hearing me. And so what I had to do is I had to work on changing my relationship with money, food, and sex. I, I had to change my relationship with him. And guess what I had to do? I had to get things in place for myself, right? 
And, and so when, you, when, when, I, when I get things in place for myself, oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Oh, I know, I know, I love y'all. Y'all want everything, don't y'all? <laughs> um, and, and so one of the things that I had to do is I had to put things in place in my life to help me because some plans I could do, some plans I couldn't. So guess what I had to do? Get help. Okay? So guess what I had to do? I, 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 um, um, I, I got an annuity planner. I, 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 in, in the next month, I'm getting my will done. Black people, if you don't stop leaving Negroes in your family to fight after your... I'm going to go through here with a paddle and spank everybody. Black people. Woo! Help me today. We, I'm, I'm a, I want to talk to us for a second. We got to do better. We die and just our family fighting. You, nobody know what nothing is. Life insurance ain't got no life insurance. Don't know what the accounts are. And so what I had to do <laughs> is I said, I'm, I'm not going to leave my kids like that. So my business, I'm, I, I, got, I, I wrote out a, a, a poor man's will, but I'm about to get it notarized. Amen. Right? Um, I, I, another thing that I had to do was I, I, got our, I, I paid off all our school debt, both of our loans. Because um, y'all don't know I'm bivocational. I be on these streets so I can you know, take care of these peoples. I, I gotta, you know, and so, so, so I started a business. And so that's why I write, that's why I do that. I do that for ministry, but also God made me, he said, no, nah, you, can, you can talk to me about it. You also do it for the money, brother. He said, it's okay to do it for the money as well, son. A to the men. And I paid off, I paid, my, so, I, so I got, I, I'm bad. So I knew I wasn't great with money. So you gotta admit when you're not great at something. I'm great at spending money. And so, and so I had to develop a different relationship with money by getting someone to give me a comprehensive perspective of using money as a tool rather than a therapy device. So I got, so I got, a, so, so my financial, I got an accountant, set up an LLC, y'all ain't hearing me. I got, I got a financial planner and an annuity planner. That annuity planner helped me to, this is what you do with the money, don't go out here and get on the internet and buy up everything. Listen, this is what I want you to do. Pay these credit cards, I'll pay them off. Then they say, put this away for an emergency fund. Put that in an emergency fund. Put this in savings. And then now I got a five bucket plan to build my financial portfolio for my family. And in my lineage, I'll be the first from my, in my lineage, not in my siblings, to begin to think better about finances and planning. Listen, family, we all have to do better with our money. And listen, listen, you don't, you're not waiting for a raise to manage your money. You, ra you manage it now. If you don't manage it now, you'll blunder the increase. And so sometimes your lack of increase is God being nice to you because he don't want you to blow the bag we the type of people, if we about to get a bag, we get a credit card and start spending, and the bag ain't even here yet. That's how you know you got a problem. I had to do, I had to do planning with my weight. I tried, I, I tried Weight Watchers. I tried Keto. I tried uh, 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 South Beach, North Beach, uh, uh, Negro. Um, I tried every single diet. So this time, I you know what I needed? I needed a mentor and accountability. Many of you in your life, you got to, listen, your life isn't going to be healthy until you work on getting those areas of your life properly planned. And God's not going to come down in a dream and say, okay, here, here's the plan. I'm laying it out for you. Take notes. No, you got to do it. I'm telling you right now, you got to do it and you got to take it seriously. Oh, I'm so ahead of myself. I love y'all. So planning involves prayer, vision, and choosing good partners. <laughs> that, that, I'm telling you, 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 I mean, this, this is what you have to do. If, what is the vision? The people said, the Bible says people without vision are unrestrained, right? And so now you got to be, begin to make the vision plain and write it down. What are you wanting to see? What do you believe God wants to see in that particular thing? <clears throat> so prayer, vision, and planning, okay? And, so, and so, so now let me go to the second point. Oh, no, 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 no. I didn't even explain the last part, did I? No, I didn't. Let me go back. Yeah. 
Put that verse back up there for me. There we go. Thank y'all. I appreciate y'all. The reflections of the heart belong to man. Dope. This is so dope. But the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. What does that mean? It means that you can plan but make room for the editor. Make room for the editor. In other words, you can have super great plans, but you, but you got to know that God is working your life out like a saga and a drama. Okay? And so God, God, your life isn't going to be a clear point direction and everything's going to blah, 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 get done. God has to do it in a way that it happens by faith. Okay. Because he has to build your faith in the process of getting to the goals that you have. If it's not done by faith, you won't appreciate him. Okay. So, 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 so get it to the vine. I remember when I was, some of y'all may hear this. When I was in college, I, I, I knew, you know, that's, this is when my writing career started. So I went to English class and, and I was like, uh, we had to do this paper. That was back when you had to go to a computer lab, you know. Some of y'all don't know what I'm talking about. You had to wait till your turn to get there and hope that you can get your paper done in time at the computer lab unless you had a typewriter or a word processor. And I hate to use a typewriter because we didn't have autocorrect on the typewriter. We had whiteout. And y'all don't even know what whiteout is, right? And so then I would have to print my paper out. When I print the paper out, I had to fold it because it's him. And then you put it together. You pull the, the, little, the pieces off the side. And then you lay it out. And then you got to break every piece apart. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. I know that y'all don't know what a, a house phone is. Y'all don't know any of that. Y'all don't know what party line. I mean, just different season, right? <laughs> and so, <laughs> and so I put I put my um I, I put my paper. I was like, I, I just know this about the you know this is gonna be used as an example teacher of how people should write papers. And so she was like, oh, a word, okay, cool, Mr. Mason. So next period, I come back, come back, not period, but next class. It was Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, or Tuesday, Thursday. So I went to the next class. When I got there, you know, the teacher, first thing they do is passing out the papers. <clears throat> when I got my paper back, um, it looked like a crime scene. <laughs> it was so bloody on my paper with her red markings that I couldn't tell what I wrote from what she wrote. And she saw my disappointment, and she said, Mr. Mason, Mr. Mason, Mr. Mason, look, I know you're discouraged, but what I want you to do, just, just go home, rewrite this with my edits and hand it back into me, and I'll give you credit as if it was done the right way the first time. That's what God does for you. You make your plans, but you say, Father, here are my plans. And I know you said the plans you have for me are good. Those are the big plans. Does this work towards your plan? And God edits it. But don't be stupid and God edit it and you still try to do it on the pre-edited way. Am I talking to anybody in the room today? Stop being so doggone hard-headed. Listen. Listen, not my will, but thy will be done. And so... One of the things that it says next, well, my, my next point, is plans are judged, this is dope, <clears throat> on a heart level. Plans are judged on a heart level. So look at what it says. It says, all a person's ways seem right to him. <laughs> Isn't that funny? In other words, you know we think we, we own to something. You know, we, we, we think we got it, right? And so, and so, and so, 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 so our ways, or ways just means directions of life, right? But look what it says. It says, but the Lord weighs motives. Well, God, God, God weighs motives. And the way he weighs motives is sometimes through circumstance. So he'll give you a small version of the big thing you want to see how you do with the small version first to show you where your heart is. Okay, let me see if I can make a plan. So with my kids, right? My kid, you know, your kids say, Daddy, I want to I wanna be a scientist. Or, Daddy, I want to be a dancer. And you know, some stuff costs a bag. Like, so I'm not investing in a $300 chemistry set or a year of karate classes, MMA classes. I'm going to do a little something to give you a little something so I can put minimal investment in so that I can see what your passion is. 
If I see that my child um, begins to uh, 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 like something or like music even more, I get them a few lessons and they like it and they, and they do it on their own, then I upgrade what I give to them because I, 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 I steward the, to them the things that meet their passion and commitment level. If they don't have the passion and commitment level, I'm not wasting my resources to invest in it. That's what God does with you. That's what he does with you. <clears throat> Some of the things that you, 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 you listen, you got to maximize the season and opportunity in front of you. You can't act like you're going to be serious when you get to where you think you're going to be. You got to be serious when, 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 you, when, when things feel mundane and boring. Because those, that, because, well, listen, mastery starts there. Listen, the plan for Epiphany Fellowship started in an asbestos-filled cubicle in a trailer in the hood of South Dallas. With water coming down. It, 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 listen, it, I didn't know where it would go, but I had to start there. You got to begin starting where you are with that. So why, what you got to ask yourself is a few questions. It's a few questions. Y'all still checking with me, right? So why are you planning this? Let's see this. Ask yourself, why are you planning this? This is up on the board. So what does God get out of it? What you're planning and what you're asking God for, what does he get out of it? That's how he weighs motives. This is the way, you, listen, this is going to sound crazy, but these questions will help you get ahead of God weighing your motives. Because you weigh your motives before God weighs your motives. You hear that? And so what you do is you say, what does God get out of it, number one? How does it invest in the kingdom? It, it, listen, these are prayers that God can answer. How are others impacted? Does it force you to steward your life, opportunities, and God's resources well? So, so, so when you ask yourself these types of questions with whatever it is you're planning, you begin to do that. So let's look at some principles of decision making. This is going to get real good for you. And it's going to free you up because some of us are hyper spiritual and some of us are super lackadaisy. Okay. So number one, I hope y'all got these this time. Please have them. Principles for decision making. The way of wisdom. Number one, where God commands, we must obey. Okay. So, so there are clear things in scripture that God commands. I really want y'all to hear me today. Are y'all listening? Yes, this is important. So, so, so there are clear commands. Do not marry an unbeliever. Listen, it's, this doesn't get any clearer than that. Like it didn't, it's no in between. Like if it's clearly said in the dead blasted word, do it. Don't ask me around it. Honor the Lord with the first of your wealth. Do I give off the gross or the net? Did you get a government off the net or the gross? So you want to give the government more than God. Anyway, y'all quiet in the mud. Where there is no commandment, God gives us freedom. You should breathe. Right? He gives you responsibility. You get a bit of the shoes. Let me, let me park here for a second. Because a lot of y'all are looking for a soulmate. And you're never going to find them. You don't know somebody's a, you're not a soulmate until you get married. Okay? Listen. God's will for your life most of the time is not a dot. It's a circle. Okay. Are y'all hearing me? God, this is how God, this is how the kingdom normally works. Very few things in your life is this, ah, oh, right? This aha moment. Like, it's circle, dot. No, only dot is salvation and a few other things. But some of y'all, listen, it's 10 people you can marry. Choose one and stop being so picky. But they don't do this. Okay, whatever. But let me tell you something. Stay with me. Stay with me. I know. I'm, I'm wilding today. But the way the will of God works is a circle. Everybody do like this. Say circle. Okay. When God made Adam and Eve, right? This is key. He said, eat freely of any tree in the garden. I know that's right, baby. That baby's screaming. <laughs> The word right, uh, 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 um, uh, um, um, eat freely. So that means they didn't have to pray about which tree to eat from. They eat from it. Matter of fact, they not only 
was able to eat from any tree in the garden. They was able to go out of the garden and subdue the earth and make more gardens and eat from all of that. But the dot was the sin. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. He said, you can eat of any tree in the garden except for the one in the middle. Why? See, that's, that's an example of how freedom looks in Christ. You're so free in Christ. There's so much for you to experience. Stop focusing on the thing you can't. That's how you make better decisions. And so if you're trying to choose a mate, um, most of us start with our preferences. Oh, y'all quiet. How they shape. How they look. Some of y'all even say, what their hair follicles look like, because that's how the baby hair going to look. <laughs> Don't act like I'm saying something. He got, he got good hair. My baby going to have a good hair. <laughs> I know I'm telling the truth. <laughs> but we got to choose based on God's biblical principles. Are they saved? Do they walk with the Lord? Do they come to church regularly? Do they give? Do they serve? Do they have other people in their life that's solid? I know I'm preaching, preaching. Because you can get you a fine fool. And listen, fineness only works for a week when you got a fool in the house. And why can't I have both? Why, can't, why y'all always got to say that? Yes, you can have both. But don't act like having both means choose the preference over the principle. I know I'm preaching. It's all good. Number three, number three. Where there is no command, God gives us wisdom to choose. And so you, you, a lot of things in life, God gives you the wisdom to choose. Like, is this the school? That's the school. Now, sometimes God, God will circumstantially narrow things down for you. He will. That's called his providence. Somebody say providence. That's God working in the, in the, in the seams and, and unseen parts of your life to bring your life together to order your steps. Oh, that's good. And, 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 and you got to know that, right? Look at the next one. When we have chosen what is moral and wise, we must trust the sovereign God to work all the details together for good. So that that means that that you're going to make plans and you're going to move forward in things. But listen, God, listen, God will leave some of your plans will have gaps because they're things that God has to do by faith. In other, in, other words, in, other words, in other words, God is not going to let you get away with having a life, anything in your life of importance that doesn't demand that faith, has, because God doesn't want you to think your plans got it done. He wants you to know that he got it done so that you can give him the glory for what he did, right? So it's very important. Making good decisions is rooted in having a deeply, deeply biblical sense of God's view. So Jesus made individual decisions based on God's sovereign prerogatives. We're going to come back to that. We're going to come back to that because that's very important. Last point, and I'm done. Good decisions involve radical faith. Radical faith. Good decisions involve radical faith. Commit means roll. Commit your activities to the Lord and your plans will be established. Now, 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 what you have to do is you have to commit your works to the Lord. In other words, you got to bring them to them, and then your plans will be established. Once you've, he's edited it, then you commit them, and then the plans get put into action. Now, but there's three types of people in this room. And I, I, you don't even have to raise your hand when I bring up these types of people. There's three types of people. Let's put them up there. It's the free-spirited, the methodical, and the motionless. The free-spirited, the methodical, <laughs> there it is, and the motionless. The free-spirited person plans and process maybe. So the free-spirited person is like, you know what? I'm going to Dubai tomorrow. No plans. <laughs> they say, Where you going? I'm, go- I'm just going to Dubai. And they're on, the, they on, the, they on the thing like this on the gram, on the gram. And you see their feet and toes and everything by the sand and all of that. Just go places. No planning, right? Uh, the methodical over plans. You know, but never moves, <laughs> and moves too slow. Uh, the motionless, they just, 
They're just trifling, basically. They talk themselves out of everything. Talk themselves out of planning, out of fear of hyper-practicality. But, 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 you, but, but, but what's good about the free-spirited person is that they can walk by faith at times in ways that the methodical can't. But the methodical is able to think through things by faith to help the free-spirited actually get some organization in your life. So listen, if you're a free-spirited person, get more methodical people around you. A methodical people get more free-spirited people around you because you balance each other out because some of y'all don't want to move because you got too many plans and you ain't, everything ain't planned out. So you need somebody that's going to say, go! And then your knees on the other side, <laughs> you, you, the, the free-spirited people, you're doing this, you're spending this, you're going over here, you got King of Prussia. Next thing you know, you're in, you in Turks and Caicos. Now you're in London. Now you're this. And they say, sit your butt down somewhere and let's plan out the year because you're in $15,000 worth of debt because you just go in places and you spin in bags and the APR and the financing on the card, you're only making the minimum payments, but the, 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 the finance charges are bigger than the minimum payments that you're paying, so you're actually getting in more debt. Get a plan! Y'all are hear me today. Yeah, y'all can tell I've been there, huh? <laughs> I've been there, my, my stupid self. <laughs> the Lord delivereth. The Lord delivereth. Number four. B for verse four. It says, the, I love this. The Lord has prepared everything for his purpose. That's his sovereign will, right? So this, this is where God, every, everything in our lives... <clears throat> God uses it for his purpose. He said, even the wicked for the day of disaster. That's crazy. So the wicked even got used to God. Ain't that something? So, so but look at, look at, look at this. My, it's one of my favorite verses in the Bible. Verse 9. Look at verse 9. A person's heart plans his way, but the Lord orders his steps. Let, let, let me explain something to you. Let me explain something to you. I like this because there were things that I had a plan for that I didn't have finances for. So I remember when one of my mentors, I said, I really want to do my doctorate degree. He says, apply. I said, but I don't have the money. He said, apply. So I applied, got everything together, and then as I planned and did my little stuff, God started sending stuff. The church ended up playing for my first year. Oh, oh, God, I feel it in my shine now. My whole doctorate degree was paid for. Even my residencies to go in for two weeks a year and all of my hotel room for two weeks was paid for and food. Boy, listen, some of y'all need to bust a move. Some of y'all, under the sound of my voice, need to start taking st you waiting too long for some stuff that God has placed on your beautiful heart to do and I came to speak a word over you today that God is saying to you today begin moving forward listen when a God told Abraham to go he didn't know where he was going he just stepped out of the city limits and began walking and God began to direct him God listen listen the plan was to go to a promised land but God doesn't always provide the details between where you are and the promised land. All he lets you know is you're going to go. Israel, all they knew is when that pillar or that fire cloud moved, we moved just like that. Because listen, when God, when God, listen, and God, listen, God is already working in where you're going before you get there. How do I know that? The Bible says we are his masterpiece. Created in Christ Jesus for good works created beforehand that we should walk in them. Oh, hold on. The good works already exist. They just waiting for me to walk in them. When you gonna start walking in them? I, I'm, I'm looking at you. I see all kinds of people. I see chefs. Oh, y'all don't hear me. I see counseling practices. Y'all don't hear me today. I see law offices. Oh, I see, a, listen, I see all kinds of things. I, I, I see physical therapists and doctors and lawyers, and I see, I, see, I see all kinds of things that you can do to build up. But you, some of y'all are so afraid 
that God won't have you. You got to get out there and bust a move. And listen, he says, a, a person's heart plans his ways, but God will order your stuff. And God, listen, he, he's going to do it in such a way. Listen, what you got to say is him because stuff is just going to drop out of nowhere. Yeah. I remember when my, my, uh, God told me uh, to quit, my job, quit one of my jobs. I was working two jobs, supporting me and Yvette, trying to pay for us to go to school. He said, quit. This one job, I said, God, I'm going to have, after taxes, $499. He said, I know. And I gave off the gross. So that brought it closer to $400. And so God said, send out a support letter. I ain't never, you know, black people, we ain't never heard of no support letter. You know, I don't know what that is. Support letter? Black people be like, boy, if you don't get a job, tell me some support. <laughs> <laughs> you better get you some support job. Our white siblings, you know, they know about that. Oh, yeah, here, man. Do the kingdom, you know. Us, we like, we like, man, you better be, you, the black people, they don't believe, you, we don't believe you're doing anything in life unless you're breaking your neck and killing yourself to get it done, right? If I had a hard time, you're going to have a hard time. Y'all know, y'all know I'm telling the truth. I'm not going to make it easy for you. You need to be taught some things. You need some poverty for like 10 years, right? <laughs> but, but we, start, we send out these support letters and black people, that don't even do it, sending us money. And so we, and, and we was able to get through school. And why? Because we were in the will of God, go to school. We were doing it, for, that's when you went away to school. There wasn't no online, none of that. You had to go. And, um, and, and man, God took care of us. Listen, let me tell you something. Your God is built to take care of you. He built like that, even though he never got built. I'm just using the slang. But he, but he also built you to walk with faith by him. And listen, Jesus submitted to God's sovereign will. And even when he wrestled with God's plan, he brought it before God. He said, let this cup pass from me. He prayed three times. But then he said, not my will, but thy will be done. In other words, prayer isn't a dictation of your will to God. It's your alignment with it. I'm done. I got, I got, I got, I got, I got this, this little acronym. We are to plan, I'm done, and present them to the Lord for divine approval. So I got this. My acronym is WIPE. WIPE. Worship, ink, present, pray, edit, expect. Well, you, you worship, you ink means you write it down. Then you present it to the Lord and pray, and then you edit what he tells you and then expect him to do it. That's what I want you to do. I want to make this practical for you. So you can go. So, so, so this week, uh, uh, um, I, I, like I told, um, the, uh, I don't know if it was, no, it was this service. It was the other service. Um, I, I told them, you, you, some of y'all need to read Proverbs for 31 days. Y'all need to read the book of Proverbs. And you, you, need to, you need to begin working on memorizing at least five verses and get your stuff in order and journal where you are now and what you're wishing for. That's your assignment this week. Where you are and what are you wishing for from God to do? And I want you to begin the workings on the thing that you know God's been putting on your heart to do for his glory. Go back through those questions. Put those questions back up there uh, for them as well. Put those questions back up there. So if you didn't take a picture, I want you to move your stuff through those questions. You know, uh, what does God get out of it? That one, those questions. I want those to be put up there. There you go. And if you don't have that, take a picture of it. Because I want you to start taking your, put it back up, put it back up. <laughs> um, keep it up. And so, so because we want them, that was the right thing. That was the correct thing. So uh, keep it up, please. So I, I really want them to, our folks to get it. Yeah, keep it up. Thank you. And so I want you, I, I really, really want y'all to work through this so that you can get a very, very stable, stable, a spiritually stable life. And this is the next section. What does God get out of it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, that's it. That's it. That's it. What does God get out of it? Yeah, that's right. That's correct. Okay. Well, keep that up there. Let's, let's go before the Lord. Maybe you're here today and you've never placed your confidence in Jesus. Um, God's plan for you is to trust him as Savior. He can't work on the sectors of your life until he works on the soul of your life. And that calls for us putting our confidence in Yeshua. Putting our faith in him and saying yes to him. That he died on the cross for our sins and, and got up 
from the grave for us. If you're here today and you've never said yes to Jesus Christ, hold your hand up in the air. We'd love to talk to you about Jesus. If that's you. You want to put your confidence in Jesus. Anyone in the balcony, anyone on the floor. Anyone in the balcony or on the floor that says, I want to say yes to him, to his will. I want to say yes to his way. I want to go from being spiritually disconnected to being deeply spiritually connected. Anyone here today? Amen. Every head bow, every eye close. If you know God was speaking to you about getting your life in better decision-making order, I want to pray for you today. I want to pray for you today. Just come on up to the middle. I want to pray very quickly. Your life needs to be put. I see you coming. I see you coming. I see you coming. Decision, good decision-making order. You want to make better relationship decisions, better financial decisions. You want the strength and the power and accord with God for your life decisions. Because you want, you want to get older and and you want to see a track record of just making some great decisions and benefiting from it. And so I'm praying that this will be, this will be the day that God literally changes, literally changes and transforms you and you get in, a, in an amazing space to be able to financially maximize what the Lord wants to do in your life. I'm, I'm waiting on y'all. I see y'all coming. I see you coming from the balcony as well. We're going to wait for you. We're going to wait for you. Better decisions. Better decisions. For my free-spirited. For my methodical. Father, you said the steps of a good man and woman are ordered by the Lord. Look, every person under the sound of my voice right now, their steps are definitely ordered by you. And Lord, you, you're, 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 you're talking to them about very, very specific areas of their life where they need to begin to work on strategy. Another thing they need to do is they need to get consultation about a lot of different things in their life. And God, I'm praying that they would get the consultation that they need in the areas of weakness so that they can be built up in every single area of their life. I'm praying for there to be a stupendous amount of victories in their life. Give them stupendous amounts of victory. Give them stupendous amounts of victory in every area of their life, Lord God. Give them stupendous amounts of victory in every area of their life. Everywhere that they begin to say, I want to do better in my sex life, and I want to have a different relationship with sex, I want to have a different relationship with food. I want to have a different relationship with relationships. God, help me. And Lord God, if there's anybody toxic in their life that they need to, 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 to make some adjustments in for their peace and mental health, God, do it. Lord God, and I pray right now, you said, he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. You said you are the author and the finisher of our faith. Lord God, I pray for them, each person under the sound of my voice, to participate in applying their individual will under the umbrella and strength of your sovereign will. And God, we give you all glory and honor and praise. And I pray that they would stick to it this time. Some of them have, done, have tried to get on track with this before. And God, I pray that they would say this time that we're going to get on track. And God, I pray that they would have accountability in their life that keeps, help them to remain on track so that they can win. And it's nothing like getting on the other side of the goalpost of winning because we did it your way this time and honored your name this time and gave you glory and honor through it. There's some people that some of y'all need to stop helping. Some people, some of y'all under the sound of my, I don't know why I'm saying this. Some of y'all are helping people and you're enabling them. Stop. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Amen, amen, amen. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. I really, was that helpful to anybody? I really want you to, I really want you to take that to heart. If you have to, listen to it again. Um, um, I, may, I may have the team put the, put the, post the PDF to the notes somewhere if you need more notes from the sermon. Um, but, but I really want us to get, I, I really meant that earlier when I was talking about black folks. When I was talking about us, just getting stuff in order. You know, I can't tell you how many older people in my life have died and they didn't have stuff in order, and it can send things in disarray. And so I'm really praying that we would have a we would we would we would have a sense of just order in our house, and that it would be a cultural norm in our culture. I, I really want us to do that. Amen. That's a good way to celebrate Black History Month. Amen. Well, let's prepare our hearts and minds for communion. Um, communion is a, a time of kind of rededication, if you will. Is anyone under the sound of my voice, if you're a believer and you want to take communion, um, that you don't have the elements, hold your hand up so we can get that to you. Anyone? In the balcony on the floor. We got um, Salim back there. He needs it on the, by the glass door. We got someone in the front of the balcony to my left, your right. Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone else? That wasn't served and want to be served. Well, Jesus, God had a plan. His sovereign plan was for Jesus to die. Every time we eat of communion, we are partaking in God's sovereign plan. Let us eat together. God planned for Jesus to die. It says in Revelation that he was slain before the foundations of the earth. It was a plan he had in place. His blood being shed was for our renewal. Let us drink together. Almighty Sovereign King, your love for us is grandiose, and you are the God that wants us to take every area of our life super seriously. And I'm praying that we would take it seriously because you take every area of our life seriously and help us to do that. Lift your right hand and receive the benediction from the Lord. Now unto him who is able to help you by his sovereign will to do everything in your life that he put in your sphere. May that God guide you this week. May he strengthen you this year. And may you see newer and greater days because the great master strengthen your hands for you to put your hands to the plow of life through making amazing and God-centered decisions and making amazing plans. To him be glory. To him be honor, to him be praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Everybody agree with that? Say it. Amen. God bless you. Take care. Have a good one.